So I am going to be starting a video series on Dialogflow CX where I'll show you the basics and we're going to build a simple chatbot together. To kick things off, I just want to point out some of the differences between Dialogflow ES, which is the older, more basic version of Dialogflow and CX, the newer, more powerful version that we're going to be covering in this series of videos. So one of the first things you will notice when you start using Dialogflow CX is that there's a visual flow builder. So in Dialogflow ES, there used to be just a list of intents and you would use that to structure and build your conversation. In Dialogflow CX, it's way more visual. So we can actually visually see the flow of the conversation and build it like that, which is very helpful when you work on more complex uh, chatbots. The next thing is the um, the way that intense work has changed very much. So in Dialogflow ES, intense used to be kind of the main building block that you could use to architect a conversation. You could steer uh, the whole flow of the conversation using intense by connecting them via context. In Dialogflow CX, this has changed. So the, sc the scope of intense is much smaller now their only function is now to actually detect the intent of the user, literally, uh, which means that you can reuse them in different parts of the conversation. So in Dialogflow CX, the intents are being used inside routes. And a route is basically what, what we see here, which uh, reflects the state of the conversation. And routes are now the main building blocks of the conversation that you can use to steer the logic of where the conversation goes. So also another powerful thing is that in Dialogflow CX, you can divide the bot into flows to basically, if you have a very complex bot, like an e-commerce shop, you can actually encapsulate parts of the conversations into a flow and then connect those later, which can have, for example, which can help to manage the complexity of a bot also help to uh, have different people working on parts of your conversation, which allows you again to manage the complexity easier. Another tool that helps also with building more complex bot is environments and versioning. So while you're iterating a new version of your chatbot, you can create new versions. If you feel like you go into the wrong direction, you're breaking things, you can go back to the, the last version. And uh, you can also have a test environment and a live environment. So only when you're sure that the new version you've built is ready to go to the public, then you switch environments and release your new version to the public. Another thing that can help with the same thing of managing complexity and uh, really making sure that what you put out there works is the regression testing, which is something that also was missing in Dialogflow ES. So in Dialogflow ES, you had a list of intents, and once you got to 10, 20, or 30 intents, the way that the intents would work together was getting more and more complex. So if you start making changes, you, you had no way of knowing if the initial uh, part of the conversation that you built was still working. So whenever I, I found myself building a new version of a chatbot, I always had to uh, manually test all the flows of the conversation that I previously built and make sure that they still work. And because this is manual work, humans are involved, it's more likely there will be mistakes. So now you can actually automate, it, uh, automate your testing and make sure that nothing breaks as you uh, extend your chatbot, which I think is really great. So in general, I already mentioned some of them, but there's more layers of abstraction in Dialogflow CX, which means you have more flexibility to combine the building blocks. It's a very powerful tool, but this comes at a cost. At a cost. So I find that the, the learning curve in Dialogflow CX is uh, a lot higher. So if, you, if you're building a simple bot, uh, start with Dialogflow ES. If you want to build a more complex bot, it's definitely worth uh, taking on Dialogflow CX because it seems like a very powerful tool. So the learning is not the only cost, actually. Uh, it is actually also more expensive. Uh, Dialogflow CX is more expensive than ES. That's the last thing, last thing I wanted to point out. So 
uh, if you start using Dialogflow CX uh, newly and you're starting to learn it, you get a six hundred dollar credit for valid for twelve months. So that should keep you going for a while to learn it. But if you want to use Dialogflow CX in production, you have to pay for it. So uh, you can see here the costs are twenty dollars per one hundred chat sessions. So this is quite something. So it's another another way where you have to really think about if you want to start using Dialogflow CX because it will the costs that incurs uh, are going to be much higher. Um, while in Dialogflow, yes, first of all, you can use the trial edition just for free if you're not planning to do any external integrations, integrate external APIs or, or databases. It's completely for free. Once you switch to the paid version, it's a very marginal cost per request. So it's a, it seems way more manageable, um, the cost. So with that, I'm going to end this video. I'll see you in the next one.